Good morning, it is chilly Baltic this morning. Baltic cold. Anyway, got some cattle to feed then, I've got some spraying to do. There's the end of this. Up and I go. You can see how the baler wasn't working properly. Seemed to think the net's being a bit of an issue, but bunching up to begin with and not wrapping right, so that only had one loop round it basically. It's fine, because we're using all these ourselves. Here's the big lad, and the other big lad, we'll get to him in a second. So update on Percy, long story short, he's not performing how he should be, so he is on the way out, fattening him up at the moment just to get a bit more beef on him, get a bit more value back from what we paid, we'll never get all of it, that's for sure. Euro, he seems to be performing fine, calm down a wee bit, so he's staying. Bit of a shame with Percy, but that's the way these things go. Can't keep him if he doesn't make sense financially, really. Don't want to be messing about with a bull that's not working. It's just a, it's a waste of time. So he'll be leaving the farm fairly soon. This is a creep feeder and it's used to feed calves and not cows. So these wee calves can get into the other side. The cows are too big to get in. It doesn't stop them trying when I'm trying to fill it up. And when you fill up the hopper, the cows sneak in like this. Hey! We bandits. Right, that's plenty. Come on. What a morning. Highland cows are roaring. I need to check whether dad's fed them or not. Doesn't sound like he has. One more feeder to fill up. If you're new to the channel, by the way, my name is Crawford. This is the farm. These videos are just updates on what's going on on the farm on a day to day basis. Each video generally is one day. Whether it's cows, which I'm off to do now, whether we're sowing wheat, whether we're combining, whether we've got a farm shop, whether it's tough to do with that, anything that's going on. This machine's been filled up with diesel. Time to yoke this machine up for its final bit of spring before it goes away for some TLC. These chains connect the steering axle on the back of the sprayer. So sprayer wheels follow exactly where the tractor wheels have been. If they didn't, they would cut the corners where the tractor goes. So the tractor goes like that, the sprayer naturally would want to just cut the corner. But as a steering axle on it, controlled via these, so that it follows the same path. Sprayer's filled up, new sprayer tank positioning position is working quite well. It's quite good just getting on the flat here, dead level. We do have an outlet here, um, but this is right on the level of the bottom of the tank. So what I'm going to do is, is drain the whole tank, plasma cut a hole here and put a new outlet here. So instead of drawing water out the top and up the middle ladder, putting the hose in and out. Quick coupler onto here, we can draw at the bottom. The pump on the sprayer won't be working as hard. And the reason I'm taking it up a wee bit is any sediment or rubbish that ends up in a tank doesn't then go through the sprayer, it settles at the bottom and every so often you can open this one and flush out the very bottom. Anyway, let's go and spray some glyphosate onto, I've got two fields to go and spray because there's potatoes coming through the stubble. First field here is verging on being a wet, soggy and wet in places but we're wanting to get this field done so we can get the sprayer back to the dealer to get worked on. Get it all sorted, get it in for winter a bit of antifreeze through it and then come springtime it's good to go and ready for action and we also need to get our head round new sprayers we've, uh, we've forgotten about it for a while we need to get our, get back into gear with that and have a look at a few and organize a few demos and whatnot sprayer went to be slightly wrong for this field because it's off of old tram line spacing which is a centimeter every three meters out every width i'll just nudge it another eight centimeters uh, in the way because that's what one centimetre every three centimetres accounts for on a 24 metre sprayer. Right, we're off. So the potatoes which 
where are they? There you go, there's one. They'll be contacted by that spray and killed, hopefully. I forgot to answer the question of how many tulip bulbs and daffodil bulbs we planted the other day. And the answer was to the nearest thousand, 70,000. There was actually a lot of good guesses. I must have given away enough information to get an educated guess because there was, I think there was 67 and a half thousand, there was 72,000, so there's quite a few close guesses. I'll put up here who was the closest. I need to look through it and check. And this person, whoever it was who won, um, gets to come and pick a free bunch when they're through the ground and flowering. Job done in this field, off to one more field. I've not got enough chemical to do the whole field. We've ordered some, so hopefully it'll come this afternoon and I'll get it finished off, get this folded up. On to the next. Right, we're done. We are out of chemical, folding up, and hopefully some more arrives just in a few hours. It's about lunchtime now, so get some lunch and maybe some chemical will be here by the time I'm finished. Chemical arrived, but it's too windy now to spray, you can hear it. Just having a nick around these cows because there's one with a bit of a lame back foot that we injected last week. Just keeping an eye on her, see what she's like. That's her here, 575. Come on, have a wee walk. <laughs> ah, she's better. She's definitely better. That's good. She's maybe still a tiny bit off, but compared to what she was at, perfect. Happy days. Everything in this field's now in good nick because that was the only one that had a wee bit of an issue. So happy days. Land Rover looks well in the field of coos. They don't half make a mess. Hey. There's some on the front having a scratch. Some on the back. So with the cow side of things, if you're new to the channel, it's quite a lot of new people kicking about recently. We started breeding cows two years ago. I fancy some cows, so we've got some cows and it ties in well because we've got a butcher in the farm shop. So the beef is reared on the farm, fed from barley and oilseed rape, which is grown on the farm, it's bedded by the straw that's grown on the farm. It's, everything's in house, everything's here. It then gets served in the farm shop, whether it's in the cafe for casseroles, beef sandwiches, stews, or you buy it in the butchery counter. That's where all our beef is consumed and used. Zero footprint, almost zero food miles as low as feasible to actually get it down to food miles wise so that's kind of where the beef standpoint is and i'm trying to build the numbers a bit now so we've got about 45 cows now we've not got any room to house more through the winter unfortunately otherwise we'd bump the numbers up so plans are for next winter or by next winter to have um, uh, a shed in place for the cattle as well for the cows i want to work up over the next couple of years to about 100 Told you it was windy, the gate's just blown shut. I'm trying to get out before these coos come. Push this back, jump in, drive out before it, before the wind pushes it back. See the wind pushing it, right? We made it. And we made it before the cows, more importantly. Okay, tomorrow morning, let's cross our fingers for some calmer conditions. Then we'll get the last of the spring done. I'm just gonna shove this in the shed for now. Right, getting the flatbed on, I need to bring the crush along to this yard so I can fix it. Need a wee bit of welding done. So it's gonna be first time. Yep, nailed it. Right, let's rock and roll. Have we got straps? No, need to get some straps. Land Rover's looking lovely. Got washed the other day. As you can tell, sparkling clean. Wheat's rolling up nice in there. We've not rolled it, never got the chance. We'll roll it in the springtime. We do that quite a lot with the winter crops. Anyway, I'm here to pick up that. These cattle filled up the feeder this morning. They don't have to get through some straw pretty quick. What a lot of gutters it is, flipping heck. These cattle need to come out of here. Conditions are just starting to turn for the worse. Well, not starting to turn, they've turned for the last week.
I made a mess of that bale, wasted a bit of it round there. Anyway, that's what I'm going to get the crush fixed, and um, so we can make sure and get everything in pretty soon. The calves will need a second round of injections for pneumonia. We'll worm them as well when they come in, and then kind of six to eight weeks post housing, they'll get a fluke treatment. Anyway, get this strapped down. <coughs> Right, good to go. Most important part of strapping down. Yep, not going anywhere. Can I get your hand to ride on? Just a piece of leg to ride on. But I'm not to fly my car on. Do you want We've made it. I've parked it here next to the power so we can get the welder going. I'll just get that welded up just now. It'll take two minutes. Not gonna reach, maybe just. Right, let's see what we can get at from here. I don't know if I'm gonna reach with a gun. It's a bit stretched from down there. It's right in there, it's been welded before. It's meant to sit like that. Might be better taking this off. Okay, so I need to weld that wee seam in there and ideally on the other side, but this assembly doesn't come apart. Well, it does, but you have to take a grinder to it to get it apart. Everything must be kind of welded in position. So it's a bit of a tricky one, but I'm just gonna have to go for it. Give it a good old blast in there. Tricky bit, I can't even clean it. Turn the heat up and hope for the best, I think. Gun doesn't reach. <sighs> Almost. Considering that's blind as anything, it's actually come out quite well. I might be able to flick it up and get the underneath as well. Right, hopefully this shows you how it's meant to work. So in here, the cat will put their head, they push against it, it locks there, and then when I want to let them all the way forward, I pull a lever, it lifts up the flap I've just welded, and that lets this whole gate come all the way forward. Happy days. Should be working now. We'll find out in the next couple of days when we get some cabs through it, but I don't see why not. I've welded a wee bit, so it's now not just gravity, it's spring-loaded. And that plate that stops the gate coming all the way open, is now working. Anyway, that's everything for this video. Thank you for watching. Also, we hit 10,000, so cheers for that. We just beat GM Farming to 10,000, so come on the Scots. And if you're not already, go and subscribe to Josh, because he was game for the competition, and it was a good race right up to the very last, last subscriber. So, cheers. Good night.